Welcome to Nivalis, the place of humanity's last hopes and dreams, and one of the remaining refuges around the globe. You're probably wondering how this city came to be and how we ended up here. You'll be shocked to find out that this world draws many parallels to ours, the only difference being that we get to see this from the safety of our own homes with a chance to reflect. But first of all, welcome everyone to a new episode of Games in 10 Minutes. It's been a while since the last video, and it warms my heart to see you enjoy this format. Anyway, today we're talking about the game called Cloudpunk, made by Ionland, a German game studio based in Berlin and funded by the County of Berlin and Brandenburg. It's another hidden gem of a game that I want to talk with you about today, but more to that after the intro. Cloudpunk goes through the standard dystopian scenario seen in a movie like Blade Runner 2049 or generally in cyberpunk universes. To cut it short, rogue AIs, mega corporations in total power, cybernetic enhancements and futuristic technologies like flying cars run by hydrogen. All this coupled together with issues like climate change and overpopulation in mega cities like Navalis. Now this is where you're coming into the picture. You experience this world through the eyes of Rania, a girl in her early 20s from the Eastern Peninsula, which is basically somewhere in Saudi Arabia. In a turn of sudden events, Rania uses Navalis to run away from her issues, which arose after her parents died and thus ended up inheriting their debt to one of the mega corporations. Knowing that she cannot pay her debt, she took what had remained, memories of her past life and her dog Atomo the Chemist, constantly on the run from the Depth Corps. By the way, the name of those guys is pretty much self-explanatory though. As for Chemist, he once lived as Rania's dog, but Rania was forced to sell his physical body to pay off the Depth Corps, and his consciousness was loaded into an automata chip. Arriving in Nivalis forced Rania to improvise. In a desperate search for a job, she found a place at a small semi-legitimate business called Cloudpunk, which considering its size, still plays a significant role in the nightlife of Nivalis. Beginning your first night on the job, you get introduced to your scheduler, only known to you as Control. In the image of a wise old man sitting in his little cubicle, guiding you through your first night and assigning you your delivery jobs via his communication link to you. The job starts off simple. Pick up a package at Cloudpunk headquarters and deliver it. No questions asked about the contents of said package. That's the premise of Cloudpunk and white people choose them. Your first action after entering your assigned delivery vehicle is to replace the onboard generic automata with your trusted dog automata, Camus. And this is where your journey starts. Luck is with you tonight though. Or maybe it's not. That's up for interpretation. Due to multiple drivers being either unavailable or being obstructed, you soon get your chance to run some special deliveries right off the bat. With Control mentioning that you are one of the few drivers available. With delivery business as your job, you can imagine what the main gameplay is gonna be about. And if I'm gonna be honest here, it's definitely not a strong suit. But it's about the correct mixture that makes this game unique. Cloudpunk's story plays through the events of one singular night in Nivalis, so it's a lot of content packed into a small time frame. Considering that these quote unquote special deliveries will mostly include abstract or even sometimes sentient objects, you will be met with ethical questions and choices along the way, which may put your own health or career at stake for the cause of the general good. Not only that, but of course, as it is with non-linear games, these choices will have an effect on your story and the way the entire story plays out. This can go from your relationship with your scheduler to the well-being of all citizens in the city of Nivalis. One thing that I dislike about the non-linear gameplay is that you sadly won't see the results of your choices until you play the DLC, City of Ghosts. There, Rania lands in her most dire situation where she has to rely on the help of her friends and the people she met along the way. You basically have to imagine it like putting in CD2 for Final Fantasy XIII on your Xbox 360. Apart from the entire delivery aspect of the game, there's additional challenges, side quests and the entire world building which add to the composition. There's collectible items for those extra dedicated. The collectibles are bound to side quests, which belong to one of your neighbors who seemingly lost all of her memories. But those memories are saved on data pads scattered through all out of Nivalis, this being due to an accident that occurred to her loved one. Or you may meet an endangered android that's hiding in a back alley, in a rather android unfriendly neighborhood, as he asks you to go and buy some skin cells from the black market to repair himself in order to get home safely. 
But hey, maybe you also just want to enjoy a short break and go to one of the infamous fast food stands you will find around the area. Maybe the cook also has some stories to tell or a task for you at hand. Sometimes you will also find broken elevators or doors that require electronic parts to repair. Those you can find in the surrounding area. Also a nice little feature, the money you get from selling found items you can invest into buying new clothes or buying furniture for your apartment, which also has an effect when the characters come to visit. You can land and explore at most of the locations you fly by. This is where the most striking feature of Cloudpunk stands out. Its game world and atmosphere which is full of details due to the carefully constructed voxel structures, together with the simply relaxing soundtrack. Though, I do think it's best if I just let the game speak for itself. When I left Novalis, I thought this city was falling into the sea. Now everyone I meet thinks it should have. But not me. Some people think Novalis is a place you have to survive. But here, I thrive. The lights, the music, the drinks, the food, the drugs, the street races. The speed of the place. It's a damn cocktail. You think you know this city, this job? You haven't seen anything till you've seen it through my eyes. And who am I? My name is Hayes, and I'm the straw that stirs the drink. That was a Tech Corp android. They finally found us. After all this time, Running this far, they still found us. Koro was right. This is a city of ghosts, and if I stay here any longer, I'll become one too. This is where we're headed. To the sky. Beyond the clouds. On chemists. Time to take the new body out for a test run. Alongside the gameplay and atmosphere, this game provokes thought by using ethical questions and tough decisions as you go through the motions of the story. It's a bold approach considering you don't see such things being discussed in games as a media nowadays. Uh, especially topics like life and immortality or AIs. On a side note, I did ask the writer of Cloudpunk, Thomas Welsh, uh, if the story was influenced by the works of Albert Camus, a famous French philosopher and the author of books like The Stranger. And it turns out that he is actually a big fan of Camus' work and that it helped shaping some of the story and characters we meet along the way, including our companion, Camus. I highly suggest reading up on The Stranger and then playing the game to see what I mean. Also, I do think you'd make Thomas happy if he finds out that the game he worked on caused some more people to invest into the literature of Albert Camus. Also, thank you, Tom, for the reply on Twitter. But to sum it up, Cloudpunk is a non-linear indie game that tries to approach a question about life and death and other ethical issues in our current and future society. It doesn't put the main protagonist at the center and manages to give a sense of scale and shows the player what role they are playing in the events that are unfolding around them. And as a cherry on top, it has a beautifully crafted environment and very rich story. If you have some spare change or time to kill, I highly recommend the game. It's available for PC, Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and Nintendo Switch. And the playtime for the main game will bring you about 15 to 17 hours, with the DLC bringing another 15 to 20 hours on top. Hey y'all, you've reached the end of the video. It's been a while since the last episode. This was sadly due to a lot happening in my life. I don't even want to go further into detail for now, to be honest. I just really hope you enjoyed this episode as much as I did making it. I poured an extra lot of love into this game as it has really grown on me. If you did enjoy it, consider leaving a like. If you have any critique or didn't like it, leave a dislike. I'd also love to hear your feedback in the comments, or what your experience with the game was. Oh, and if you want more videos like this, I'd love to see your name in the list of my subscribers. 
A special thank you goes to my friends who helped proofreading the script, you helped making this possible, and of course, thank you for watching. That's all for now. <laughs> Until next time.